Presumption should never make us neglect that which appears easy to us, nor despair make us lose courage at the sight of difficulties. So are the words of Benjamin Banneker, our nation's first black inventor. Benjamin Banneker was a scientist, a surveyor, an almanac author, and a farmer. He was born November 9, 1731 in Baltimore County, Maryland. So he was born during the time our country fought for independence from England and the birth of our country. He was really self-taught, but he did get in a little bit of elementary school at a Quaker school. He was born a free man and the family owned a beautiful farm. He really quickly exceeded the instructor's ability to help him. So she had him make up his own lessons. And again, he loved math, so he did a lot of these lessons in math. And then he would solve them himself. So he'd come up with a problem that he was interested in and, and solve it. And with just a few semesters of elementary schooling, think of this, Banneker taught himself algebra, geometry, trigonometry, astronomy, astronomy and civil engineering and surveying. So he was a, a basically a genius. He came from a wonderful family and his grandfather had the uncanny ability to always predict the weather, make the right decision of when to plant the crops, when to harvest the crops, and if they didn't have enough uh, water he would irrigate them so he had the most productive farm in the whole neighborhood. His grandmother uh, taught him to read and she also uh, read him the Bible. When he was 22 Banneker had a friend that had a watch. He'd never seen one before. He was fascinated by this watch. So the friend gave it to him. And he took the watch apart, put it back together about a few times, and then he decided he wanted to reproduce this. So he made technical drawings of it, and he decided to reproduce it larger in wood. And he made the first clock in the United States. So he really basically invented the, the clock. And it struck on the hour, and it kept perfect time until he passed away. President Washington, with our uh, new country, decided to move the capital from Philadelphia to where it is today. And where it was was just, um, there was nothing there. And they hired someone from French, France, Mayor, Major Pierre La Enfant, and he was commissioned to develop the plans for the new city. And at Jefferson's request, and this is a big thing right here, Banneker was included as one of the men appointed to assist him. And uh, poor Law Enfant, because he was not a citizen and he was a foreigner, people were criticizing him and complaining about the work he was doing. And finally, he just had had it. So he resigned and took all his drawings with him and went back to France. Well, they had a meeting, they had nothing without the drawings, all the work they had done, all the surveying they had done, everything was gone with him. And Banneker said that he could reproduce the drawings accurately and the same as the drawings that La Enfant took with him um, in two days. And he did reproduce them from memory. So he had a photographic memory. He could basically uh, remember everything, which is, if you look at that map, that would be a really hard one to memorize and be able to reproduce accurately and to scale. And uh, the picture on the left is a boundary stake from the original survey there that still, you can still see them around Washington, D.C. A family friend died when Benjamin was around 50 and uh, he left Benjamin some astronomy books because he knew he just devoured any book that he could get, a telescope and other scientific inventions. And Banneker, like with the watch or like other things that we don't even know about that he was interested in, he was obsessed with it and he became fascinated with looking at the stars and the skies and taught himself astronomy. And with that, with his strong mechanical background, he was able to 
predict event, events because things are cyclic. And he was able to uh, predict solar eclipses when the sun would rise, when the sun would set. And this was all important information to a farmer. He could also predict uh, like a bad winter or predict the weather and seasonal changes and when pests would come around like locusts would come around every X amount of years. So he included all of this in this almanac that would be uh, wonderful to any farmer. And he included tips on planting crops and on medical remedies as well. The first one was um, printed in 1792. This is one that's from 1795. And on the left you see how he hand, it, he had awesome penmanship, but he would hand write out the book and then they would uh, send it to a printing and they would put it on a printing press and print it and uh, they um, he kept up his almanac until just a few years before he died now this is what is amazing this this relationship is is an amazing event but Banneker sent a copy of his al almanac to Thomas Jefferson who was the uh, Secretary of State at that time and eventually became the president and uh, it started a dialogue between them. Benjamin Banneker believed in not in being courteous when you dis disagree and to uh, resolving things in a um, intelligent and courteous manner. And so uh, Thomas Jefferson had made a, a statement which was completely uh, wrong that uh, intellect had to do with the pigmentation in a person's skin. And so um, Benjamin Banneker sent this with it that the color of the skin is in no way connected with strength of the mind or intellectual powers. And of course being a genius uh, he is living proof that that is true. And he won over uh, Thomas Jefferson so that he included him in that uh, survey of the um, Washington DC where the, the capital now sits and they uh, exchanged letters uh, through the years. I hope that it's true that Benjamin Banneker died quietly on October 25th 1806 in a field looking up the stars through his telescope that would be idyllic I'm not sure there's a couple of different uh, meth uh, different versions of how he passed away but he was still living on the family farm in the family house but he'd lost a lot of the land around it and the property and um, the unfortunate thing is you know that through the years of living in that house that he had engineering notebooks he had ideas that he put on paper that he had uh, uh, a lot of things like when Tesla died and the FBI took his information there we lost a lot because his house burned down the day of his burial. So there's a lot about Benjamin that we'll probably never know. A lot of things he was passionate about, a lot of things he was interested in. But the nations mourned his passing, viewing him as a genius and the United States' first great black inventor. You might say about Benjamin that the condition of your birth or youth cannot keep you from your passion in life. And this was also true of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. They had uh, issues of, from their birth as well. Also never give up, aim high and work hard, stand strong for what you believe in, and you're never too old to learn something new. Like Leonardo and Michelangelo, he too never married, and uh, I think they just didn't have time to marry. And um, their learning all brought them at the last to uh, the, the universe, the stars, trying to figure out, I guess, why is there life, the big questions, and um, Banneker's answer would be intellectually with uh, the numbers and how far things are away, etc. I leave you with a couple of quotes from Benjamin Banneker. He believed that the universe was controlled by their, a supreme ruler or a supreme mind. So he said, I have a sense of the most profound gratitude to the supreme ruler of the universe. And this next quote is so amazing to me he's basically being shot at and instead of being fearful he's analyzing the bullets it's amazing standing at my door I heard the discharge of a gun in uh, four or five seconds of time after the discharge 
the small shot came rattling about me, one or two of which struck the house, which plainly demonstrates that the velocity of sound is greater than that of the bullet. So again, he was analyzing how it went and learning something new. So again, I feel so bad that we lost out on uh, his papers because of his house burning down, but he was truly a um, great inventor. And uh, so uh, we have one more to come, and then we end this series. Thank you for listening.